And we're turning to 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30, please. And this morning we're going to read of one of the darkest days in David's life. When we come to 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1, we read, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire and and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jerilelitis, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Caramelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading from His own precious truth. It was in the early hours of Tuesday morning, in the wee small hours of Tuesday morning, when I was awakened out of a sound sleep. It takes a lot to waken me when I sleep, you know, for I sort of go unconscious when I sleep. But I was awakened out of a sound sleep on Tuesday morning, the wee hours of the morning. But I wasn't awake, awakened by a sound, or I wasn't awakened by a nightmare. I'll tell you how I was awakened in the early hours of Tuesday morning. I was awakened by the words of my text, the text that God has given me for this morning. The words of this text awakened me, and God brought them to the forefront of my mind. I was never awakened by a text before, but the Lord has many ways. And he has many means and methods of showing me what his message is for the Lord's day. I was awakened on Tuesday morning with these words. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. That's what wakened me on Tuesday morning. Those words, but David encouraged himself. And the Lord is God. First Samuel chapter 30, and verse 6. I tossed and I turned, and I turned and I tossed, but could I get to sleep? Those words came thumping into my mind, but David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. As I wrestled 
to get back this, to sleep, the Lord wouldn't let me sleep until I totally surrendered and said, okay, Lord, that's for the Lord's day. And he gave me a wee thought, you know, just as I was dropping over again. But David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. I wonder, is there somebody here this morning and you're badly in need of encouraging? Mind you, God's people needs encouragement. But you know the wee thought that the Lord gave me just as I was slipping out again into sleep? And it's this little thought. There are few circumstances, few circumstances that gives us the best opportunity to, for us to exhibit and for us to prove the grace of God more so than when our backs are against the wall. Let me repeat that. There are few circumstances that gives you and I the best opportunity to exhibit and to prove the grace of God in our lives more so than when our backs are against the wall. It's when our backs are against the wall, child of God, and there's no way out, and there seems to be nowhere to turn. I can tell you now, those are the times when we can really prove the grace of God in our life. As I have already said as I introduced the reading this morning, David comes here in 1 Samuel 60, in, or sorry, 1 Samuel 30, in what I would describe as one of the darkest days in our lives. Christians can have dark days, you know. God's people can meet dark days. It says in verse 6 at the opening, and it says there in verse 6, and David was greatly distressed. You know, God's people can get greatly distressed. God's people can get down. God's people can get discouraged. And here in 1 Samuel 30 this morning, David's back is against the wall. But remember this. Because I believe David remembered it, and I'll tell you what it is. When everything is against you, and everyone else is against you, you remember this. There's always God to turn to. When everyone turns against you, and everyone turns against you, you remember this because David must have remembered it. There's always the Lord to turn to. There's always the Lord. You see, David's back is against the wall, and, and God wants to show us this morning through this message and through David's experience, how one can encourage oneself in such dark times. That's the title of the message that I have given to God's message this morning. How one should encourage oneself when their back is against the wall. Maybe this morning this is just where you are, your back's against the wall. Everyone's against you and everything's against you and you have nowhere to turn. 
But I'll tell you, if someone to turn to, you still have got the Lord. Here's how one should encourage oneself. But David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. David hadn't a clergyman. David hadn't a pastor. David, David hadn't any Bible scholar to encourage him. No, no, no. The text says he encouraged himself. Personal encouragement. Nobody else threw alongside David and put the arm around him to encourage him. No, 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 no. David had to encourage himself. Personal encouragement, but there was powerful encouragement. But David encouraged himself, I, in the Lord, his God. When you're back is against the wall, child of God. Your heart has touched you. And first of all, as I think of this text, I'm watching David, and I'm watching his heart as he encourages himself in the Lord his God. As I watch David here in 1 Samuel 30 and verse 6, notice first of all that David encouraged himself in the Lord under a heavy heart. And it says, and David was greatly distressed. You can almost feel the weight on his heart. You can almost feel the heaviness upon his heart. And when you look upon that verse 6 this morning, you can see the reason why his heart was heavy. Nothing gives you more of a heavy heart when people turn against you. And nothing gives you a heavier heart when not only when people turn against you, but when people blame you for their trouble. That's what was happening to David. The people were blaming him for their trouble, and they had their knife into David, and they were twisting the knife. But here's a wee thought that the Lord gave me because sometimes we're all like that. You see, the people that turned against David, the men that turned against him, they failed to recognize that David had, their, had the same sorrow that he was grieving, that he was sorrowing, and he was distressed as much as them. But sometimes, child of God, we can get selfish in our sorrows. Sometimes, you know, we can get selfish in our sorrows because when we sorrow, all the sorrow we can see is our own sorrow and we fail to see other people's sorrow. So we'll blame them even though they're, they're hurting just like us. No, no, no. Can you see this morning David's heart is very heavy? He's lost everything. He's lost everyone. And now his friends have become his foes. And you remember when a heavy heart is heavy, that heart is hurting. No wonder is there a hurting heart here this morning. There's somebody that you love, and there's somebody very near, and there's somebody very dear, and they've turned against you in some way. Your heart in these days have become heaven. 
your friends have become your foes. And you have nobody to turn to. You see, David's back was against the wall. I can tell you now the arrows of unjust criticism. The arrows of unjust criticism. They inflict a deadly wound. In spite of David's loss, in spite of David's sorrows, in spite of David's grief for his own, the boys are now shooting the arrows of unjust criticism into his heart. David suffers the pain, but David encouraged himself. And the Lord is God. Listen, dear. Listen, sir. Maybe that's what you need to start doing. I don't know who you are. You've been down long enough. You've been distressed long enough. You've been discouraged long enough. And here's the message the Lord has for you this morning. Start encouraging yourself in the Lord your God. Don't stay down. Look up, my friend, because God is there when everybody else is against I remember a police detective going to a murder scene. There was four army men blew up in a landmine between Bamburb and Armagh. He was sent to the scene. He followed the command wire as to where the detonation point was on the hillside. This detective constable was a is a sound Christian man. He's off the force now. But in the midst of mayhem and death and, oh, undescribable what you would see, as he looked to the hillside from where it was detonated, God brought a verse to his mind. It was Psalm 121 and verse 1. As he lifted the wire and held it in his hand, as he slid it through his hand, going up to the detonation point, he said, I will lift mine eyes on to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. You see, David was in the darkest moments of his life. But he learned a very important lesson, child of God. Maybe you need to start learning it, and I'm saying that in love now. Start encouraging yourself in the Lord, not depressing yourself by all what's going on around you. But David, encouraged himself in the Lord under a heavy heart. And as I watched David in my mind's eye that day, you know, David only didn't encourage his heart in the Lord his God under a heavy heart. I watched him, and I learned another lesson. We're going to encourage ourselves in the Lord our God under a heavy heart, then we must do it under a humble heart. You need to have a humble heart if you're going to encourage yourself in the Lord your God. If you notice verse 6 very, very, very clearly, you'll see that these boys were all against him. 
But this is how David encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord, and he turned a deaf ear as to what these boys were saying. And he turned a blind eye as to what they were planning. You see, child of God, what's wrong with a whole lot of us is this. We're so much taken up with what's going around us. And looking up at the one who's for us. I don't know this morning, I wonder, has family and friends turned against you? Maybe a work colleague. Man, your work colleagues can turn against you. You take this from me and take it as through personal experience. When that happens, you just encourage yourself in the Lord. But you notice this about David now. Even though his friends and the men were scheming to stone him, and they were falsely criticizing him, you notice this, David kept a humble heart, for he never answered them a word. He didn't speak unkind to them. You see, child of God, here's something about a critic. Here's something about a boy that talks about you. A critic is always taken up with himself, filled with pride. I know it all. But here's what I have learned, and here's what happens. Do you see criticism? Do you see critics? Critics injure themselves more by their criticism than they do whom they criticize. Critics injure themselves more by their criticism by those who they criticize. No, 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 David just stays quietly and he just takes himself away, you know. He takes, he doesn't answer them, he doesn't say nothing, he stays quiet. He gets away alone with the Lord and he begins to encourage himself. You see, when you're alone with the Lord and you keep a humble heart, you're in the place where God can lift you out of your distress. I remember my father telling me the story when they were when he was joining the RUC. They were up at Inniskill one day for their firearms training. They were told how to get themselves out of an ambush. Six of them were in a Land Rover, and the next thing there were six boys around them firing blanks, of course. And once you heard the gunfire, you had to get out and take cover. Well, my daddy, he jumped out first, and he ran across the field, and the boy says, keep down, Ray, keep down, Ray, stay down. And the rest of the boys, they did for cover, but the boy halted and called my daddy over. He says, Roy, if you're ever caught in an ambush, he says, for goodness sake, keep your head down and keep low. A boy that keeps low is not easy shot, but he says, you made yourself an, a, a wide-open target. There's a wee less nothing as this. Do you see when people shooting the arrows of criticism at you, stay down and say nothing back because their arrows come upon their own heads. Martin Luther King Jr., three months before he was assassinated, had a meeting with those who he was associated with, and at that meeting, many of the Negro friends, they were against King because King wanted to go the peaceful way. It's not working, said the people, and they all turned against Martin Luther King, Jr., his own people. But this was King's answer. Love 
is the only force that can turn an enemy into a friend. Out of all the books that I have in my library, apart from the Scriptures, the next my most important book is Spurgeon's Lectures to My Students. In one of the chapters, he writes this, win over, your win over your worst enemy by your love, and you'll find that worst enemy may end out to be your most faithful friend. Martin Luther King went to bed that night with a heavy heart. He wrote in his journal that evening, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of, of convenience, but where he stands at the time of challenge and controversy, even if he stands alone. He made his way over to the old record player. There was no CDs in those days. It was the old 33s. Flickered through a few LPs. And he came, Martin Luther King, he came to an LP recorded by, it was a recording done by the Statesmen Quartet. Greatly burdened by the night's meeting. When he felt everyone was against him, he fingered down the tracks until he came to one that was entitled, Where No One Stands Alone. It was written by a man called Mosey Lister, and he played it before he went to bed. The song says, Hold My Hand, all the way, every hour, every day from here to the great unknown, take my hand, let me stand where no one stands alone. And the Lord gave him a verse as he got into bed when he was revealed he threatened not. If you're ever going to encourage yourself in the Lord, you watch David, you have to do it under a humble heart. Let the Lord deal with it. We all too many times like to take things into our own hands. But finally and thirdly, I'm going to finish because here's the other kind of a heart that David encouraged himself in. But David encouraged himself in the Lord as God under a hopeful heart. When everything was against him and everyone was against him, he gets away alone with the Lord and he forgets about everything and he begins to reconsider how the Lord blessed him in days gone by. You know, past blessings are a great encouragement. He remembers and he reflects the day when he stood alone against the great giant. God was there. And as he encourages himself in the Lord as God, and as he looks at how the Lord delivered him in days gone by, he now encourages himself with a hopeful heart because if the Lord done it in the past for me, he'll do it again. Oh, no, friends, this morning, listen. When David's back was against the wall, he had to learn this lesson. And listen, love, you need to start learning this lesson. And I need to start learning it, never mind you. 
how one should encourage oneself is by encouraging ourselves in the Lord our God. You turn to your, the Lord in your darkest hours and encourage yourself in Him when nobody else is there to encourage you. Now, do you see what the Lord has said to us this morning? Here's the color that really puts the beauty into the picture. Take a wee look at this, boys. I thrilled at this. Verse 9. Boys, I love this. The hair stood in my neck when I read it. Verse 9. So David... So David went... He... And who? And the 600 men that were with him. Boys that dare is not wonderful. <laughs> the boys that were talking about stoning them, they're sticking with him now. If David had a riz to their criticism, he wouldn't have won. But the very boys that spoke of stoning them, they're sticking with him. It's all about encouraging yourself and the Lord when you're distressed with a humble heart. And child of God, if there's anything you take out of this meeting this morning, you take this home with you. I have to encourage myself in the Lord. I can encourage myself in the Lord, my God. But you can only do it under a very humble heart. You see, child of God, this morning, David's dark day became a delightful day because he learned the one lesson properly, how to encourage himself in the Lord his God. But David in spite of what was against him or who was against him. But David, he encouraged himself in the Lord is God. May we all take a leaf out of his book. May we all learn to encourage ourselves in the Lord our God. God bless his word to all our hearts. We're going to sing our closing hymn. It's three